This is my beautiful HP ML150 server case, uh, generation 2 dating from, I don't know, 2004 or something. Uh, and we're going to be turning this thing into a 12 terabyte NAS. Uh, so this case has been housing my Windows server for a couple of years by now, but that server's only had two drives in it, uh, which is completely neglecting the fact that we have six SATA hot swap base to go, go with. And that enables us to run a much fancier RAID setup than, uh, you know, two drives in non-redundant uh, RAID using Windows. Uh, so we're going. I've got uh, five new drives in order. Five free terabyte drives. We're going to be doing a free NAS uh, RAID Z build uh, of 12 terabytes, and. Uh, we're going to have to modify this case a bit to do so because uh, since I knew this thing was going to be used for Windows uh, with just a couple drives installed and the rest just uh, being empty trace, I have soundproofed away all the hard drive cooling because uh, the uh, low speed drives I use, I've run two WD Reds in this thing, uh, don't make enough heat to actually require any ventilation. Uh, however, with five drives uh, plus an SSD, uh, we are going to require some hard drive cooling, I do think, because the, the WD Reds run at about uh, 45C uh, in normal operation. Uh, that was with minimal airflow anywhere, but uh, yeah, I don't want to risk running my drives over 50, and uh, that is certainly going to be the case uh, when we get the new drives. So we basically have to undo a bunch of this stuff. Uh, so the first thing I've done actually to improve cooling is I've mounted a sound proofed uh, a gentle typhoon 1850 RPM in the back here. This is going to be the main cooling fan for everything. And this is a bit of a special one because as you can might be able to see I have potted every crevice with it with automotive uh, car proofing stuff. So this thing is uh, uh, mitigating a lot of the motor noise you usually get from uh, these gentle typhoons. They have a bit of a knocking sound to them, but since this is just such a massive thing now, even though it's just made in a plastic bracket uh, with no actual damping, it's uh, quite quiet. You don't get a lot of uh, resonance in the case, of course. This case is very soundproofed everywhere with uh, heavy padding, so it is quiet case no matter what you do but it's gonna have to get slightly less quiet because uh, this front panel has air vents here for the hard drives but uh, I have uh, installed soundproofing in the way since I wasn't building it for airflow and uh, we have these pads on the side we have one on this side one on that side which is blocking off all these uh, air vents uh, for the hard drives. Uh, so uh, I want to keep uh, the soundproofing since I don't want this thing to be any louder than it has to be. Uh, so I think what we're going to end up doing is uh, uh, probably ripping the soundproofing off. Uh, we're probably going to have like small marks where the adhesive hasn't attached here uh, and just cut that out. So we have a bunch of holes in our soundproofing holes here all over and uh, then we can keep most of the stuff uh, and we'll get rid of this, install air filter material instead, uh, which also has a bit of a, an impact on sound since it uh, diffuses everything. It's, you know, kind of the same stuff you use in sound proofing the material on the walls. Uh, but yeah, the biggest challenge is going to be managing to get this st stuff just cut out properly without it destroying it all. And I don't think we can remove the entire drive cage since I installed this stuff. Yeah, while it was mounted, so even though this thing is attached with screws, we can't actually uh, get it out. So we're going to have to figure out something. Well, okay. I opted to take the whole caddy out. Oh, well, caddy cage out. Anyway, because I just had to cut off a bit of adhesive uh, soundproofing stuff on the top and bottom, and then it came out uh, very nicely. And uh, the adhesive and this stuff, uh, you can even reuse it just fine. So we'll poke this back on once we're done. And this is just going to make our lives so much easier because now we can just put this on its side and uh, drill out uh, this stuff and that stuff. So sadly, uh, they've actually put uh, 
metal uh, through these holes uh, from a factory but uh, that's probably not going to be an issue since uh, this thing is built for like uh, 15k rpm drives so yeah our 5900 RPM drives isn't isn't going to be a huge thermal load for this thing, but I do think we're going to need some airflow at least. So yeah, holes on this side, those holes on that side, and I think we're going to be good to go. And a lot of drilling and cutting later, we have something which might be able to sustain a couple more hard drives. So it was really easy doing this since the soundproofing material is uh, so soft and workable. I just eyeballed the positions of everything and uh, cut it with a small knife and uh, drilled the small hole so it with a 4.5 mil drill just mongering the drill around to make it uh, the oval shape of a hole. So I'm not going to bother cleaning it up more properly than this. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, it's not going to affect performance and this is all enclosed inside the case anyway so no one has to see it unless they really really want to. Ah, there it is. Back in the case. Most of the improving back except for the fat piece and uh, the ones which didn't have enough adhesive left to really work. So I think that's going to be pretty good. It's going to serve our purpose just fine as soon as we get around to fixing the front panel. So uh, this stuff is obviously going to have to go. It's going to get replaced by this stuff, which is this stuff, which is uh, industrial filter material. Uh, I obviously don't want my server full of uh, dust and grime. So we're just going to be ripping these out and uh, poking some of this stuff in there. Well, I don't think we're even going to need to attach it. I think it's going to just kind of get wedged in there just fine. So the way I do this, uh, since I don't we need this entire thickness of stuff, I'm just going to cut out a piece. It seems these two sections are about the same size, and then I'm just going to uh, split it in two to make two copies. Yes, so with the case pretty much done, I have uh, loaded this thing up with a bunch of the crappiest hard drives I've got lying around uh, and turned this thing into the worst 300, 300, 300, 300 gigabyte NAS you've ever seen. Uh, so our array includes uh, some of the original Maxta 80 gigabyte uh, SATA one drives that this server came with. I've even got them loaded in the right caddies. Original drives, this one's got 18,000 hours on it. Still works miraculously. And I've installed FreeNAS on this thing and it's actually working full speed right now, even as I pull that drive. And I have been very pleasantly surprised by how well FreeNAS handles that uh, because I just shove the drive back in it's going to be chewing for a bit and uh, in just a few minutes that drive is going to be back online as if nothing ever happened. Uh, however, since this is a device I own we of course have some electronic weirdness going on as well uh, because initially I was going to run the rear fan just hooked straight to the motherboard, which doesn't support free pin fan control, uh, using one of these uh, resistor adapters. This is like a 100 ohm resistor or something. It slows the fan down a bit, to uh, gets an RMS voltage of about 7 volts or so, it makes it run nice and uh, quietly, but of course only at one speed. And uh, I figured since we do have dust filters, in our case, those can potentially clog up over time, which is going to require our fan to work harder in order for our drives not to go on fire. So I've constructed a small fan controller circuit, identical to ones I've used in other projects, it's just an op amp and a transistor and an NTC basically, like free resistors. Uh, and it's currently regulating the fan speed quite well. I've got it trimmed to keep the back plane uh, at about uh, 30 8C or so, but uh, let's uh, just rip the case side off and have a look inside. And that is a little magical shrink wrap uh, box, which is getting slightly warm to the touch. So it's got a 110 turn potentiometer there, which adjusts the uh, threshold voltage for the fan. It's a weird circuit, it just has one adjustment, which kind of, eh, 
it goes between loud and quiet. I don't know how the fan curve works or anything. I just know it works. <laughs> a very, very, very sharp fan curve on these, and it's connected to an NTC, which is stuck to the back plane right up in there by the wire. So on the PCB, you can see the little copper piece which has the NTC connected. So that's just sitting there, and the screw and copper piece are pretty well connected to the metal casing for the hard drive caddy. So it's getting a reasonable temperature estimate of the entire hard drive bay. I don't want to have it too close to the hard drive just to prevent it from running away and adjusting too quickly if one hard drive is being weird or something like that. I prefer having it measured on the back plane and the screws they provide a very neat mount for it and uh, it's just running with this wire, output wire to the rear case fan which is of course the main cooling fan for the hard drives. Uh, I've had to uh, cover up a bunch of vents here just uh, because uh, else the fan would be pulling too much air in, here, in through here uh, and not through the front of a case because the, since we are running only exhaust fans in this thing the power supply has an exhaust fan and this is an exhaust fan we have a negative internal pressure of the case uh, which is uh, a bit tricky to work with because uh, we really need to carefully uh, cut off any air supply that's not going through where we want it to go uh, because the, all these vents around here if we had any on the side of the case would just allow air to take a much lower resistance path to the fan uh, than the hard drive cages would since we do have a rather restrictive uh, airflow path through these uh, through these holes and furthermore going through this maze of a front panel and then through this filter and then through this grill uh, it's really a very high resistance uh, airflow path I also had to cut off most of the supply for these two uh, unpopulated uh, 60mm uh, front fans because uh, yeah they, they would just uh, uh, most of the air would go, be going through here and uh, through the lower filter instead of through the hard drive caddies which would just make them run hot and the fan spin faster, pulling more air through here and yeah, not achieving anything at all. I did leave it a little open though since uh, it, it uh, does a lot of good to, for the CPU f to just have a bit of clean air uh, or a cool air coming through. This thing has been working a treat. Uh, I just uh, got it off from uh, having the best of the entire front panel covered up with this uh, cloth there and uh, seeing just uh, how well this thing regulates with uh, a clogged filter and it's got up to about 8.5 volts and now it's dropping down since we uh, have the airflow path cleared and the case off and uh, it's uh, done a good job. Uh, I've installed three NAS and gotten uh, used to the basics of it and if we go to reporting and uh, disk and scroll all the way down and we can see that the temperatures of our discs are uh, high but manageable. Uh, these are all very old 7200 RPM drives so these are using more at idle than my uh, real discs are going to be using under full load. I think the temperature sensor on this one was uh, has actually broken because the oldest drive of them all it was uh, running about uh, 7 degrees hotter uh, than all the others but then it got really hot like over 50 and then it just stopped reporting temps. I'm wearing a Dell shirt. Why are computers so difficult? So, uh, I've been waiting way too long for all the new server hardware to arrive, so I've been setting up a backup system for the soon to be new NAS, and uh, that's just been a complete mess. It turns out the free NAS hardware hates pretty much everything, including cheap servers from 10 years ago, who would have thought? Uh, but never mind that, because we finally have all our new fun stuff. So pretty much all of this uh, is going to go into uh, the uh, FreeNAS uh, device. So we have uh, five 
uh, Toshiba uh, low speed 3 terabyte drives these are pretty much the cheapest 3 uh, terabyte low speed drives you can get um, my friends uh, experience with recent Toshiba drives have been has been good so I'm expecting to get a decent life out of these so these are going to make our RAID Z array with one drive redundancy and then we have two SSDs uh, one USB device and one SATA device uh, originally the SATA device was going to go into the final six hot swap bay of the server to access the system drive but I think I actually want to use the USB drive for that. So these are pr probably pretty much the same stuff on the inside. One has just got uh, the USB to say the converter inside. And uh, we actually have an internal USB plug on these cases. So it's going to be pretty neat. And the reason for doing that is I want to uh, save one of the hot swap bays in case I need to just shove a drive in there to do whatever, if I need to grow the array, if I just need to pull some data onto a different drive, something like that. It's very nice to just have a free bay available uh, if I need arises. Uh, and uh, to finish off, we have a new power supply. Now this thing is going to be a bit interesting to check out. It's an FSP Hex 85 plus 350 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. And they brag about having all Japanese capacitors. Look at that. Uh, found a review online, it uh, did not seem to have that. It had some caps on polymers instead, but polymer caps rarely fail, even if I know names, so I'm quite confident. And they brag about five years warranty, which I'm sure I'm never going to be able to use anyway. Well, of course, I'm not going to be able to use it because we're taking this thing apart to see what's inside. Uh, but yeah, excited about that. Seems to be a decent unit from the specs. Uh, so, I'm excited. Let's get a new drives shoved into the chassis and uh, just uh, do a complete write over them to make sure uh, they work. I'm probably just going to mirror the lot and just do, do a DD Dev Zero to uh, our tank. Let it run for a long, long time. All right, there we have all our new drives installed. Isn't that a thing of beauty? So I've marked them up with the ending part of the serial number. The, uh, the, the they're all pretty much consecutive serial numbers up to that digit, which is uh, changing uh, among them. And having that label just. Uh, Makes it a bit easier in case one fails to identify uh, which one, since we actually don't have working drive LEDs on a per bay basis, since that requires the proprietary HP RAID card to operate properly. Uh, now, uh, uh, we're going to be doing a first test boot with the new power supply because we're going to be chopping this thing up uh, to improve its reliability. And uh, I don't want to do that if it's just not going to be able to power this thing or if it's failed. Uh, I've made sure the fan's been a few short of the ATX power pin, but uh, alas, that's no uh, replacement for a full on power test since we do see a quite a bit of a surge probably when the hard drives boot up. Now the back plane is smart enough to have a delay on the start of the hard drives, it takes a few seconds so uh, everything starts first then the hard drives go so it shouldn't be an issue especially since this is uh, one of these uh, big single rail power supplies uh, with a diesel to diesel converter for the other rails so this thing should have no problem at all uh, starting up our drives but uh, let's just give it a go. Uh, I'm going to be very interested in seeing our uh, power consumption because uh, with a trashy test base supply and the trashy test drives, this thing was doing about 60 watts idle, which is quite horrendous. Uh, and I'm expecting a significant improvement with this uh, uh, more efficient power supply and the more efficient hard drives. So let's go. And we're seeing a big spike in power while we're revving up. And it seems to be booting. And it's up and running. We've got all the drives detected. But sadly, our power usage is uh, over 50 watts sitting idle. And uh, that's not even with the 
a rear case fan even connected so that's a bit disappointing I was uh, expecting uh, somewhat better uh, performance I was expecting like 40 watts or so but oh well uh, that I suppose that's the price you pay for uh, redundant discs 50 watts isn't that much anyway but uh, uh, coming from one server running at about 30 watts to two servers running at about 100 watts total is yeah eh, not nice gonna be a nice hit to the wallet but what can you do today has turned into tomorrow and uh, I left to uh, before going to bed last night, I took all the new drives, put them into one giant mirrored array and uh, set just ran a DD to write random data to all the drives until they were full. It's a bit of a, a test before putting this thing in service. So, during the night, we wrote uh, 3 terabytes of data until the drive was 100% full. Then I checked all the smart data of the drives. Uh, when I got up this morning and everything was fine. So I do think we dare use these discs. I don't think we're going to have any DOAs. They behave very well thus far, as you would expect. Uh, however, I have identified a couple of issues with this build, which we are going to have to rectify before putting this thing into proper service. So uh, in the previous segment, I said I was going to modify the power supply, which I have done in a different video. And it has an issue because I have replaced the fan in it. It's now running a gentle typhoon in there somewhere, uh, which is a very good ball bearing fan, which is going to last longer than the sleeve bearing device it's shipped with. However, uh, the original fan is much more powerful than the uh, new fan, and uh, the fan controller isn't really optimized for this case. Uh, because what happens is this case fan is running at a much higher speed than the power supply fan, which wouldn't usually be a problem in a normal case. But since we don't have an intake fan on this, we have a low pressure in here. And that means this poor thing can't keep up. So we end up with pretty much no airflow through the power supply at all. And it's, uh, uh, even at low load, it gets reasonably warm, warmer than I want it to be. Not catastrophically warm, but yeah. I don't want to be able to put my hand there and go, oh yeah, that's warm, because that's entirely unnecessary. We, we can achieve better results. So, uh, we're going to have to take this thing out and actually modify uh, the uh, fan controller in it slightly. Uh, another option would be to just run the post supply fan off of the hard drive fan controller, which would give us the same revs on both the case fan and the post supply fan. Uh, but I like having a, a bit of redundancy there in case. Uh, this fan shorts out or the controller goes bad we'll still have one fan running even if it's gonna go into jet engine mode it's uh, not gonna uh, destroy the server all right and there our power supply has grown a potentiometer so if you want to find out some more about how that's happened i've actually made that into an, a separate video because it's a bit of an interesting topic but long story short if we drop the flow flap down we now have good flow through our power supply with our replacement fan and it's playing nicely with the case fan as well. Alright, and I think that pretty much sums it up for the hardware in this machine. We got our power supply sorted, we got our drives sorted including our little USB boot SSD down there, the transcend something something 220 USB-C. SSD which is running USB 2 but that doesn't matter. We've got our air filters, we've got our drives, we've got our beautiful uh, air routing with uh, packing tape done, that's fine, that tape lasts forever. And uh, all that really remains in this thing is uh, setting up the software. So I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time learning FreeNAS uh, in order to uh, figure out how to actually get this thing working properly since it's going to be serving Windows clients. Uh, that's probably going to be a bit of an interesting experience, but uh, thus far, experiences have been good. So, uh, yeah, we'll move on from there. Hopefully this week I'm going to be getting my hands on some old server hardware to run my backups to because my current backup system is uh, 
a bit of an interesting mess of Core 2 Duo garbage and random old drives. I'm trying to get my hands on something which at least has uh, ECC memory. But uh, I think that might be a story for another time. Right now, I'm just going to try and figure out how the hell to get permissions and shares working on this thing. And then we have about 8 terabytes of data to copy in from that old thing. <laughs> 